Hey, Steve Mignone here. You're watching the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. And uh, we're indoors today. You know, it's just too snowy and wet and cold outside to do any kind of junkyard crawling or muscle car crawling over at High Octane Classic. So we're in the house today, but that's okay. If it looks like I'm getting ready for lunch or dinner, my beer, my ketchup, my model cars, well, you're right, but you're wrong. <laughs> Actually, today we're going to be talking about novelty marketing, I guess. We'll start it off with this. This is, oh, a nice bottle of Schlitz beer, right? Well, not so fast. This is actually a flashlight. Now, Schlitz was made, or is made, by the uh, Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company, started in 1848, and by the 1950s, Schlitz was the number one brand of beer in the United States, but Budweiser surpassed them by 1957, 58, and pretty much took the lead from there on. But this is a Schlitz flashlight, again, novelty merchandising at its best. Now, I put batteries in it, you turn the lid, the cap, right here, you can hear, turn it off and on, but, the battery and the bulbs are, well, the batteries are inside. You can see them right here. Trouble is that the bulb is blown out. It's got one of those little tiny ancient filament type deals. So I could probably change that and uh, get a real glow out of this bottle of Schlitz if you catch my drift. But um, that's the story of that one. Now, the other side of the coin is ketchup. Now, this is a bottle of Heinz ketchup, right? Well, <clears throat> before we get to what it is or isn't, just remember that catsup, C-A-T-S-U-P, and K-E-T-C-H-U-P, ketchup and catsup, are the same thing. Uh, it's just a matter of spelling, and in fact, the Brits are the first ones who pretty much use the term ketchup, K-E-T, uh, ketchup, as does Heinz, but catsup. It's kind of weird, same thing. It's just a matter of spelling and where you're located. Uh, but this is actually far more than a bottle of ketchup. The lid does come off. You can see right here, there's some sort of fake uh, ketchup inside, but it doesn't come out. Remember that Carly Simon song, Anticipation. They had this ad where you're pouring ketchup out. But this is actually a radio, and uh, the on-off is right here right there. You can hear it right there. And let's see if we can't get this, uh, okay, I can't get this open. But anyway, tuning it comes down to turning the bottom right there, like so. And it's an AM radio. So again, it's a novelty bit of merchandising. And here are the speaker holes on the back right here. So it looks like ketchup, but it's not. You can catch some AM radio on this ketchup bottle, but that's about it. <clears throat> Moving beyond that, <clears throat> the world of automotive radios, not just in the dashboard of your car. This is a 1963 Cadillac, um, a Series 62, I believe, convertible. Now this is also more than it looks like. It's plastic bodied, but these were made, I think, by Tandy for Radio Shack. And I remember as a kid, you'd see these things again at Radio Shack or Zare or Woolworths, but it's a radio. So let's open up the tail, and there's the place where the batteries go, and it's put a 9 volter inside and see if we can get some music out of this thing. <clears throat> Watch, it'll be the JFK assassination day or something. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on. Yeah, it does work. <laughs> Okay, the on-off switch is here. Okay, it's tuning up. Desi the desire is world peace. That's probably from the Cuban Missile Crisis. I would have this thing where old radios play old radio broadcasts. And of course, the, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. Is it coming through this thing? Maybe. It's cool that it still works. Another automotive radio that's kind of weird that hides in plain sight is this. This might look at first like a 1966 Mustang 2 Plus 2, or Fastback as we uh, like to call them. And this is something my grandmother owned when I was a little kid. Um, this is actually a radio also. And this little bend we see right here, I made that when I was four years old, like in 1968, by stepping on this. My grandma was so mad at me. But anyway, I still have this. And grandma's gone, but the radio is still here. But again, let's see if this thing works. Okay, let's turn it off so we're not so rudely interrupted. And we'll put the batteries in place. It's Again, it's a 9-volter. Stick the battery inside. Moments of truth coming up. Okay, let's turn the knob. Okay, it's cranked up. Nope. Nope. Well, like Grandma, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be functioning anymore. Sorry, Grandma. Just kidding. But yeah, this is a 1966 uh, Ford Mustang 2 Plus 2. And remember that Philco uh, was founded in 1892, the Philadelphia Electric Company or something like that. And by 1906, Philco was the leading manufacturer of batteries for electric cars. You know, of course, it's 2022 right now. And we assume that electric cars are a new thing. No, in the early 
20th century, 1905, 1915, uh, electric cars, gas cars, and steam cars were the three big ones. And in fact, all three sold in almost equal numbers. But Philco in 1906 was one of the leaders in making batteries for electric cars. Now, Ford bought Philco in 1961, which explains the merger between Ford and Philco. Uh, and that arrangement lived through 1974 when Ford sold off uh, the Philco brand to GE. Uh, but this again is a 1966 Ford Philco Mustang. Now, this here is another 60, five Ford Mustang 2 plus 2. Now this is not a radio, this is actually a strict promo, an actual by AMT 125th scale toy like you would have gotten if you went to a Ford dealership in 1965 to see the all new Mustang. What a lot of people don't realize is that the Ford Coupe and Convertible debuted and were the only models available for about the first seven months of Mustang sales. And around October of 1964, you could finally get the 2 plus 2 Fastback. And crazy but true, of the like 600,000 Mustangs sold in 1965, only about uh, 77,000 were Fastbacks. In fact, Ford sold far more convertible Mustangs than they sold 2 plus 2s or Fastbacks. But the interesting thing is that they're similar, but they're not the same. They have different wheels. The one on the bottom here is the 14-inch GT wheels. The one on the top is the base 13-inch uh, wheel and tire combination. Of course, the grill GT standard. And uh, so they're similar, but not the same. But that's the story of uh, novelty merchandising where things can look like more than they really are. If you like this uh, video, um, thank you. And we will be back to the junkyard for more junkyard crawl as soon as it warms up outside. And for season two of this whole thing, we probably will hit the road, go to California, Arizona, wherever we have to, to find good stuff. But in the meantime, we're here in the house and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, of course, subscribe to the Steve Magnanti YouTube channel.